Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans. Welcome to the bunker. It's time for another voicemail. Today's voicemail has been left by an anonymous caller who identifies as a Jehovah's Witness. Let's listen to what they have to say. Hi, Lloyd. I'm a 75-year-old JW. I've been in the so-called truth for 40-odd years. I've been listening to some of your tapes this last few weeks and most of the things that you say I've already felt for years and years. But I've decided that to stay with it because at my age and not having much family left and nowhere and no one else to go to, uh, it seemed the best thing was to just hang in there and, and just put up with things the way they are. But then I began to think, if, if the governing body is not the faithful and discreet slave, is it possible that they are, biblically speaking, taking Jehovah's name in vain, taking, as it were, the, you know, in the Ten Commandments, um, uh, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Are they doing that? Because that would be a reason even for even me to leave because I do believe in Jesus Christ and his Father, Almighty God, and the Bible. Um, but like I said, being in my situation, there's no way I can, what you call, uh, wake up and get out. I have been awake for a long time, but I can't get out. So I just wondered what your thoughts on that would be. Um, I'm not sure, uh, I don't want to give my name, Perhaps you could put it on uh, on the thing, or better still would be good if you could just give me a quick answer to that. Whether you use it or not is up to you. Well done, by the way. You're a good guy. Thank you. That's very kind. Thank you. And I will use it if you don't mind, since you've given me permission to, because I think your message is profoundly important in dealing with this particular issue of should I stay in a religion that I no longer believe because I don't have any family left, this is my entire community, and I don't have anywhere else to go. Now, I think in some situations where someone has reached a certain age, and especially if they're in a relationship where their partner still believes and there's no way in the world that they can be convinced to be honest and to reevaluate. I think there are certain situations, heartbreaking though it is, where you do need to stay inside. I mean, in your situation, if it's purely about your fear of community, where am I going to find my, my new community from? I think you might be surprised. I, it wouldn't surprise me if, with a bit of digging, you might be able to connect with other ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, maybe even some of whom are your age, in your locality. And you can kind of look out for each other. And if you email through to support at jwsurvey.org, we'll do our best to point you in the right direction in that regard. But in terms of age, I mean, 75, Joe Biden the President of the United States, is 78. He's three years older than you, and he's running a country. So don't be too hard on yourself in terms of your age. You might be surprised just how much life there is to live still. There are some incredibly active people I know, ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, in their 70s. And I, I see how much they're achieving late in life and I think wow I, I hope I could do half of what you're doing when I'm at that age you know I think it's very easy to just dismiss the possibility of living a rich and meaningful life just because someone is advancing in years I, I'm not sure it works that way probably in some cases depending on health probably in some cases you will be very limited and I don't know what your health situation is. But age alone, I don't consider to be a reason 
to stay in an exploitative, abusive group. And social network alone, I don't consider to be a reason to stay in an abusive, exploitative group. Again, if you had a spouse who was a believer and there was no possibility of them waking up, or you had a massive family and there were huge expectations, that's when it gets complicated. I think your situation is less complicated than you perhaps think. Now, as to your question about are the governing body taking the Lord's name in vain? Obviously, I'm no longer religious, so I don't really have much of an opinion on that. Although, if you do want to go down that road, because I'm used to arguing from the Bible, even though I'm an atheist, because it just so happens <laughs> that even the Bible identifies Jehovah's Witnesses as wrong, as as something that should be avoided. And rather than the verses that you were alluding to, I would just go straight to Deuteronomy 18, as I've repeatedly quoted on my channel, Deuteronomy 18, verses 20 to 22, where it simply says, if any prophet presumptuously speaks a word in my name that I did not command him to speak or speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet must die. And you may say in your heart, how will we know that Jehovah has not spoken the word when the prophet speaks in the name of Jehovah and the word is not fulfilled or does not come true? Then Jehovah did not speak that word. The prophet spoke it presumptuously. You should not fear him. And it's not just a case of not fearing a prophet like that. We've just read a verse that kind of condemns the prophet. So in the context of ancient Israel, I'm not suggesting that the governing body should be <laughs> executed. They would probably wish that on me. I'm not claiming that that should happen to them, although I do think they should be held accountable for what they're doing in terms of abuse. But the verse there is calling for their death, is calling for the death of those who make predictions in God's name and those predictions don't come true. Quite apart from what you're saying, and just to be absolutely clear, please, I'm not calling for, for the execution of the governing body. I'm now kind of conscious of the fact that they watch some of my videos and take my words out of context. But that verse alone for me, if I were still a believer, if I were a Christian and I were in your situation of, should I just stick around? Uh, that alone for me would be reason to start finding ways to fade and to just dial things down. Because here's the thing, if you don't believe anymore, then as a Jehovah's Witness, you will find yourself in a situation Obviously, it's different at the moment with the pandemic, but in normal circumstances, you will find yourself in a situation where you are expected to go to complete strangers' homes and persuade them to join a religion that you no longer believe. Now, it could be that due to your age, you're able to get out of doing that, or you, you just do it like a token hour per month where you don't really speak to anyone. I don't know how you get around that, but the whole point of being a Jehovah's Witness is that you are a witness of Jehovah. You are a publisher. You involve yourself in making disciples, in drawing more people into the religion. So for me, as a matter of principle, and I understand there are many who, who will be watching who are Pimo, However you need to navigate your way out of an organization and, and at what pace you do that is entirely down to you. But for me personally, as a matter of principle, if it were possible for me to leave an organization that I knew to be false, that literally required me to go around lying to people, as a matter of principle, I would need to leave. And there's no shame in leaving. People get all 
hung up about the word apostate. Oh, you don't want to be an apostate. You know, it's one thing to leave, but I would never identify as an apostate. An apostate is just someone who leaves a religion. That's what the word apostate means. Check it in the dictionary. If your religion is abusive and exploitative and breaking apart families and killing people, and you have an opportunity to leave, which not everyone will, I recognise, I feel it's your moral responsibility to leave. That's just my view on this. Now, whether you leave and at what pace you leave um, is entirely your decision. All I would say is don't write yourself off just on account of your age and don't write yourself off on account of your community ties because I like to think that there are probably more people in your community in your situation than you probably realize and they will be interested in helping you and supporting you because they need help and support themselves and they'll probably enjoy your company and enjoy comparing notes with you as someone who's been in this organization for decades and has seen it change dramatically from when you first started out. You know, it's ch it's changed dramatically since I left around 2011. I can only imagine what changes you've seen if you've been in for over four decades. So I hope that's given you something to think about Short answer, yes, there are theological reasons if you are a Christian or if you identify as a Christian to part ways with um, an organisation that lies to people. And second of all, please don't write yourself off. You still have plenty of hope for a satisfying, meaningful life. And I know personally many who are your sort of age who are doing just that and who relish the fact that even though they've wasted years or decades in this organisation, at least they get their freedom now. You know, freedom is so precious. It means so much to be able to reach your own conclusions and not have an organisation do your thinking for you. I'm sure you realise that. So I hope this has given you something to ponder. If you would like to leave a voicemail, the thing to do is visit speakpipe.com forward slash cedars, indicating clearly if you don't want me to play your message on my channel. But that's about it. Don't forget to subscribe to the Lloyd Evans channel for more such videos. And as always, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.